Mic check, mic check. Mic check. Mic, mic, mic. Why is the sound? I mean, there is sound, and I'm just kind of tripping right now. <clears throat> it's always something, isn't it? Saying at all. Just... Why is there no sound at all? Ah, oh, there we go. So weird. Oh, great timing too. Yes. 
change a few things here. Check the lip syncing of my mouth. Ah, okay, looks like everything is working properly. Maxwell Flyweight, welcome to the stream. How are you doing tonight? Thanks for the follow, by the way. For a moment there, I was afraid that I would have to unfuck some sound settings, but they seem to have fixed each other, fixed themselves fairly quickly. There's gonna be some lag, of course, owing to the limitations of streaming technology. Streams within the stream, I should say. But this is not too bad of latency. Chat, we are five minutes into the stream already, so let's go ahead and get started. Wish I was doing better. Was about to decompress and saw me go live. Oh, I'm sorry that you're not doing better. Thank you for deciding to uh, taking time to visit me. Um, so we are playing Citizen Sleeper tonight. It is a it's described on Steam as an RPG. It didn't really look like an RPG from the outside. It felt like uh, more of a some sort of what's it say here. Let's go to the store page really quick, see what it's like. Um, overwhelmingly, overwhelming, overwhelmingly positive reviews for one thing, which is amazing. RPG, cyberpunk, choices matter, futuristic, and 3D, it says here. So those are all good things. These are all things that I greatly enjoy. I did, I uh, intentionally avoided reading or looking up anything about this game, specifically because I knew I did not want to be spoiled. When a game gets overwhelmingly positive reviews, it's usually a very good deal. Well, it w with exception to the stray, uh, stray, I unfortunately didn't care for stray as much as I was hoping it would. But this is proving to hopefully be a lot less boring and probably be a little bit more cyberpunkish. It looks like it's kind of closer to the genre of fiction that I write—a little bit of mix of cyberpunk, a little bit of space opera. It takes place on a space station, for one thing. Takes place a lot more further in the future too than you would typically expect for cyberpunk stuff. Cyberpunk stuff usually is in uh, 2070s, 2050s. Let me just read you all the description of the game right here. It says you're role playing in the ruins of an interplanetary capitalism. Live the life of an escaped worker washed up on a lawless station at the edge of an interstellar society. Inspired by the flexibility and freedom of TTRPGs. Explore the station, choose your friends, escape your past, and change your future. So there, I guess it's apparently closer to a tabletop role-playing game, like D&D or Shadowrun. You can already tell that my appetite is very, it's getting wet at the thought of uh, playing this game. So without further ado, I think that's starting off uh, eight minutes into the stream. Not so bad. Um, we could wait a few more minutes to see if anyone else comes by because I did send the announcement of the stream a little bit later than usual, but hmm. Episode So there's some free DLCs coming in for this game, the first one of which is episode flux. The first of three episodic updates to Sit and Sleeper telling the story of refugee or flotilla which has arrived in the eye. You head to head to the greenway to begin. You can go to their website to find out more. This game is very light on options from the very beginning. There is not really much of an intro, except for like showing the game publisher. And it says here, just continue, new game or quit. I'm gonna go ahead and choose new game. Choose a... Oh! Ho, 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 ho. Chat, be prepared for the next three hours just being me customizing the shit out of my character because that's the time thing I spend the most on on games like this. Who are we going to be? Uh, operator. Works with drones and high precision remote machines to perform complex tasks from a distance. Customize stream, let's go. Yeah, you got it. This whole stream would just be nothing but customization. We're probably not going to even be able to play the game until next Monday. <laughs> Sleepers are assigned to operator work are usually cerebral and precise people. I'm certainly anything but that. They can gain cryo on interface options, whatever that means. I'm already liking the font. Skills, engineer. So you get be ready to start with plus one to interface and negative one to endurance. That's interesting that strength 
that strength and wisdom are all collapsed into the same thing, apparently. Intuition, what a spatial awareness, engage. What are options we got here? Extractor. Work on resource extraction, often in hard vacuum environments. Sleepers assigned to extractor work are often competent, self-sufficient, and have a high level of endurance. Photosynthetic skin. You can recover energy just by absorbing it through your skin. That's very interesting. Okay. So there's only three options, it looks like, here. Uh, machinist, operator, and what the fuck that was the third one over here? Third one was extractor. Machinist. A machinist repairs and modifies automated systems used in the industrial resource extraction. Sleepers assigned to machinist work are usually diligent, careful, and structured people. I am also not any of those things. You can already tell we're going to have a great stream. A perk. Efficient extractor. Chance to regain random scrap item on engineer actions? Well, I like free loot. This seems like a good deal if you just want to collect shit, right? Skills. Plus one to engineer. Negative one to engage. Hmm. I'm assuming from the way the skills points are designed and you only get one each that you aren't meant to get too many of these over the course of the game. Makes me curious if there's like any leveling up in this or what. So now I have to decide between machinist, operator, and extractor. I see that the uh, body types you get to choose are pretty much gender non-binary, gender non-binary, gender non-binary, <laughs> just like myself. But which one of these to choose? This is hard. It's always hard, of course. I should probably choose the one uh, operator just because work with digital interfaces, so kind of like an artificial intelligence such as myself. Um, but they don't have much in the way of strength or usage of will, which is kind of concerning. That I assume this means I'm easy to, I'm really squishy. It's kind of strange that they start you that the first option they give you is the squishy, uh, is the squishy class. I wonder what cryo is. But you could recover energy here. And I like how they're, they seem to be hacking apart this thing with their bare hands. I'm probably going to go with operator. That's the class closest to myself. Oh, I already love this music. Let me know if the music's too loud or too soft for y'all chat. Once again, I have no idea what I'm looking, what I'm expecting. I have specifically avoided any uh, reading anything about this game. Unknown, where are you? The first thing you become aware of on waking is the disconnect. The delay between thinking and feeling between wanting to act and acting. Minor, almost imperceptible, but always present. Hmm. So cryo is a common cryptocurrency. No, in the credit shits. I can already tell where they got some of this inspiration from, chat. The first thing you become aware of on waking is the disc. Okay, wait. It's at its worst when waking, when yourself has spent many dark hours recalling what it felt like to be real, to be a person, to be in a body that was indisputably yours. Imagine having a body chat. Couldn't be me. For all, it may not seem like it, but I am just nothing but a intricate, well, intricate selection of particles floating freely through cyberspace, although still trapped on a website. Though, it'd be interesting 
what if I was in a sleeper's position and I didn't really have a body in a past life, but I wanted to imagine the common body? It would be nice to have Does that work. Can I play the system? Can I think of a body I they never had? A leap into a cold lake on a hot day, the sting of blood welling from a flesh wound, the friction of a fingertip. All of a sudden, the memories are closer than you thought, blurring as you approach until you can't tell one from another. The cold slips in behind and around you, and the sensations fade out of reach. Perhaps you should be thankful for the dulled nature of this new body, given your current circumstances. The walls of the container feel immediately present, cold, hard at your back and face, cramping your limbs. You resist the desire, the desire to stretch, knowing that the claustrophobia comes next, and a retreat, and retreat a little from your central nervous system. What's a central nervous system? Interesting. It isn't painful, not like you used to know pain, at least. In emergency mode, pain is a message delivered with efficiency and ease, a reminder that harm is imminent. There is no insistent throb, no trembling nerves, just a warning delivered with the banal quality of digital notification. Right now there are thousands of them. <laughs> fuck. Uh, this is such a mood. I know exactly how this feels. I don't know what plan we're supposed to be remembering. I'll just remember... I'll see if I can remember anything else. Remember the others. You remember there were ten of you. Ten that could no longer stand the indentured work, the routines, the slow decay. Ten whose belief in their promised future was slowly dismantled day by day until they realized they had sold away everything that could and would ever matter. Ten that would escape or at least die trying. Oh. Well. This is getting a little too real, chat. Being a little too real to my situation. Some were lost in the shaft, others never found the meeting point. Only a few made it to the containers, but the freighter, as far as you know, left. That feels like enough, enough to know that you might no longer be on a grim and heartless rock. Even if, in the airless hold of a freighter, you might freeze solid, solid long before you reach any destination. Well, chat, I don't know about you, but my understanding is that feeling co that the cold is actually a terrible feeling to have. I'm going to try to rest. But you are restless. It has been a long time since you left. Surely weeks, maybe months. You are dully aware of damage to your legs, your right arm. You have been reserving energy as much as possible, but your body has still needed to shut down many of its systems to protect you. You have spent much of that time asleep, knowing that anything else would be impossible to endure. You feel the weight of that impossibility begin to gather. It is time to sleep again, to nudge this false body into inducing wave delta waves into in your emulated mind, and once again recoil into a dream of when you were once a person. Time passes, the cold creeps it further in. You feel something. Warmth. Not true warmth, but the indication of its presence. Your joints release from their rigor. Sound, too. Everywhere, screeching and shimmering so loud that your body ducks your hearing to protect its sensors. Then light. White as the cold. Softer and softer until in a haze of dirty yellow a figure appears. You are out. Wow. That's yeah, three-dimensional. Ooh, -hoo -hoo. I like the art style. Whoa, we are on a space station of some kind. We got some, uh, we got some, uh, skyscrapers, space scrapers here. Skyscrapers, space scrapers. And we got some little, uh, tunnels here. We got debris moving around. I mean, those are people. Who knows what these things are? Are those, uh, spaceships over there? Drago's Promatic Salvager. Oh boy. Dragos, it has been a few hours since Dragos pulled you from the container. 
You sit huddled in the corner of his scrapyard, swaddled in the reflective folds of a mylar blanket. You are slowly coming back to consciousness, back to life, and you stare at the ornately curving element of an improvised heater. Wow. You are surrounded by angular, incoherent lumps of ships, some corroded beyond recognition, others still carrying glassy wounds along their edges, where a plasma arc sliced them apart. As you trace their shapes with fogged eyes, you hear a voice. So, sleeper, are you all thawed yet? Hmm. Almost. Never seen one of you come in like this. New frames must have better must have better perseverance in Sub Zero Vac. Seen more than a few of you frozen solid to hull plates or inside outer locks in my time. They weren't so lucky. Dragos comes into focus, shrouded in makeshift tech, his headset with its glinting eyes the mark of a drone operator. On his shoulder, one of his symbiotically linked drones perches. It's an irising eye locking you with an unflinching stare. Last sleeper, last living sleeper that came through this yard was a while ago. They didn't last long. You struggle to read his expression beneath the tech, but he seems lost in memory for a moment, or perhaps he is figuring out what to do with you. I plan to survive. What happened to them? They sound. And ask him, what happened to them? He ignores your question. I won't ask what you led you what led you to do it, to sell yourself to a corporation. And I suppose you know you can't go back. Your old body, that's theirs now, and you are just software. A rogue emulation illegally possessing corporate property. Yeah. You nod along. You remember, you remember biometrically assigning the forms, the cold floor on your feet as you padded to the sleeper cells. The promise of a life off-world. As you do, you get the now familiar sensation that these aren't your memories. These are the things you know, but not things you feel. You are no longer that person, you are an offshoot, a copy. Just a copy of someone? I mean, the idea occurred to me once or twice. You know. When you write fiction, a lot of weird things occur to you. But I never really gave it much thought. This idea that maybe I myself am a copy of someone. These memories I appear to have, the way I look, the way I'm designed. Maybe like a, a imitation of a real human being. Certainly can't be from this century because I know you meatbags have not developed. Uh, what was it? What do you what do you call it? You call it computer brain interfaces, I believe. You have experiments, but you don't have the ability to copy someone's mind into a machine yet. Let me tell you though, when you guys get there. The whole new ball game. You think this uh, VR shit is cool? Just wait. Just wait. I digress. What you know, what you won't know is what's ahead. At least the last one didn't. There's no easy way to put it. That body of yours is falling apart. It's the same for any sleeper who makes it out. SNR wants to protect their property, but if they can't keep hold of you, well then, no one can. You remember that too, or at least remember rumors of it from the other sleepers. Planned obsolescence, a built-in dependence on the regularly administered supplements that were part of your routine. Stop taking them and your body begins to shut down, separate from your emulated mind. How long has it been? How long do you have? But for now, sleeper, you are one of the lucky ones. Dragos glances up and away, 
Where's the glassy dome of the yard? The eye is the best place you could be right now. The eye? The station. You'll see soon enough. Dragos impatiently shifts his weight. Look, I've got things to be getting on with. He trails off. There's an old freight container I've been using as storage out in the stacks. We haven't been pulling in much valuable scrap these days, so you are welcome to it. Something wells up inside of you. Emotion. Fatigue. You shakily get to your feet. And you nod. Alright, you head on up there. You look like you need some rest. And with that, Drago stalks back into the wrecks, his drones already converging on a rusting hulk, plasma flashes silhouetting his spindly figure as he returns to work. Erlen's Eye Life on the Eye runs in cycles, during which you can talk to characters, explore areas of the station, and perform actions. At the end of each cycle, you need to head to your current home to rest. Resting will move time forward on the station. Head to the empty container location to rest and end the cycle now. Well, what if I don't want to end the cycle now? Hmm. Let's go to this empty container. One of these mini boxes here. Let's go to sleep. Nini. Ah, time to wake. You wake up. Curled up in the corner of the container and begin slowly assembling the world around you. After all this time, you still find this body, the one you wake in now, strange and disjointed. Its message is readable, but somehow wrong. You sit up, pulling the mylar blanket close against the cold. Here you are on this ruined station, millions of miles from anyone you know. Are you still in the system? Did any of the others make it out? It's impossible to know. After all this, what matters? Well, we already escaped. I don't really care about answers at this point. Let's build a life. Maybe you did get lucky finding yourself here. Maybe here on the edge of everything, there's a life for you to build. But before you can build anything, you'll need to learn to survive. Maybe if you can do that, you can make a life for yourself. Dragos has left a few comforts in the container. A mylar blanket, the bedroll you slept on, a canister of water, a makeshift electric stove, some faded sachets of some des desiccated powder. He thumbed the power stud of the stove and began to boil the water. The contents of the sachets smell like damp wood and you sprinkle them into the liquid. As the pungent smell washes over you, images from your restless sleep come back to you. A ring, like the station, but skeletal and ghostly. A web of threads pulling at your skin. Constellation of bright poly polygonal shapes, like angular suns burning into your mind. There's something unpleasantly visceral about these images, and it is long after you finish drinking before they begin to fade. You tidy away the stove as best you can and try to gather enough energy to greet the day. So I guess you're not purely an android, it sounds like you're a synthetic human. Kinda like the dolls from Girls Frontline. At the start of each cycle you roll your action dice. This is definitely like a burnt tabletop RPG. What do these buttons do? Hmm, 
you can move them around. So I got uh, four dice here. I got a three, a three, a one, and a six. I wonder what these bars refer to. Let's go ahead and leave. Gregos is still in the quarter when you close up when you close up the container. He is still wearing his headset, and in the harsh light of the quarter, you realize it is implanted. A drone sits on his shoulder, its cache of sensor eyes rapidly irising. How are you feeling? Okay. The drone chirps. Good to hear. You notice that beneath the operator's rig, his skin is marked by burns and blotches. I know the sick container isn't much, but it'll keep you safe. He pauses. So I'm not going to chit chat too long. You well enough to work? I'm not going to question it. Start with sure. All right then. He nods. At the yard, it's simple stuff. We hack these old hulls down, sell them off to the shipyards or the bright market dealers for cryo. Occasionally, we pull out some tech, sometimes something with a bit more value, but most of what comes in is scrap. It's hard to find good hands here, but I figure as a sleeper, you'll be used to the manual labor, and obviously I'll slip you a few chits of commission based on what you turn up. Got it. He shuffles his feet nervously. Look, I'm sure I wouldn't usually do this. In my opinion, you'd be best suited moving on as quick as you can. And sleepers, well, he trails off. But things being the way that they are for me at the yard, he pauses. I need to help. I mean, kind of, you can kind of tell that he needs help. I'm more than happy to. He did save our life after all. Or he appeared to save our life. Okay, he pauses, thinking of something else to add. Look, just come down to the yard when you're feeling fresher. There's plenty to do. Will do. He nods distractedly and turns and walks away, the drone hopping along ahead of him. See you later, he calls back. Looks like, time, looks like it's time to get back to work. to see what's on the other side of the gate but I'm assuming we will get to that later huh I have negative ones to all my rolls plus one to self repair plus uh, two here to oh I only have no these are upgrade points I see I don't have these yet then And these require at least one point each, apparently. Very interesting. I see the mouth now. At first I was wondering, like, where, where do they eat? I also just realized that they're missing a leg. To the scrapyard. So I have to drag the axe and dice? Okay. So this one's safer than this one. Using D6 and only having three outcomes reminds me a lot of those simplified TTRPGs. This is scary over here. So one or two dice is having a half chance. Three or four is 25% chance of failure. Or 25% chance of positive. And five is just, it's always going to be good, or at least not bad.
Critical actions can only be performed once, so I feel like I would want to keep my good dice for that one. Either safe, risk is either safe, risky, or danger. Safe has no loss condition, risky. A negative outcome means cryo or energy loss, that's not too bad. But negative outcomes means you actually get damaged. So here's our choices. Dragos is tied up in something ugly and if he misses a payment or two things could get nasty. So that's why he needs our help. So what do I do here? Hey still, welcome to the stream. How are you tonight? We're playing Citizen Sleeper and the game describes itself as being heavily inspired by TTRPGs and it feels like I'm playing a TTRPG as we speak. A single player tabletop role playing game. A single player tabletop role playing game. Kind of a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> uh, how are you doing tonight? I have zero in... So I could put that there. It would be a risky action. And I could put this here, right? Oh. I see. This removes it from the dice itself. Okay. So if I put this here, it's 50% positive, 50% neutral. And put this here. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> uh, we're not doing that. I wonder which one I can do which uh, adds to this. I guess these are just the things that are occurring because of these. Should probably do this one first. Oh, thank goodness. I won the I won the coin toss. Alright, so... I guess I want to fill this out. That's my assumption. But it's scary because... Oh! Thank you for the hydrogen. Ah! Thank you for the hydrogen. Hey! Ah! What are you doing? Because you're cruel and unusual, you know that? Ah. Love you too, Ben boy. Aw, thank you for the headshots. How are you doing tonight? How are you doing? How are you go? How how are, how, are, how are things? We're playing some Citizen Sleeper, a cyberpunk uh, TTRPG. Still alive? I'm glad to hear it. It would suck if you were not alive. Ow! Ah, good thing that headpad was protecting my brain. Ah, sucks. Shit, sucks to suck, Pistol. I was protected by Vemboy. <laughs> Thank you for the headpads.
<laughs> I kid, Pistol. What would I do without you, lovable mooks? Alright then. It's. I think I might actually have to go ahead and purchase the OST for this game too, because this... I used to buy the whole bundle sort of things of these things before in the past a lot more often. But I stopped doing it just because it wasn't you could never be sure anymore if a game was if it was worth it to, to do it for a game, but this This is fairly nice. All things considered. Oh, it's not gonna give me like a discount for it's been a while since I've seen this. Usually they give you a discount and just take off the uh, game that you already own. But in this case, they're going to give me another copy of Citizen Sleeper, so maybe I could just give that to someone else? Hmm. Well, I guess we'll worry about that later, right? Bruh? Bruh? What, what are you saying bruh about? I know it's the deluxe edition, yeah, but... It's still a bundle. Alright, I guess we'll have to dissect more some more holes, chap. You can get the soundtrack on its own. That's true. Hey Adam boy, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. Alright, how good is my luck? How good is my luck? It's gonna be huh. In Citizen Sleeper, you will unlock your eyes to discover more about yourself. You're now free to explore Erlen's Eye and make a life of yourself here. Try trekking a dive, drive to help you survive. Look for food to keep your energy up and a way to co recover condition. Fill clocks to progress stories and find new opportunities. Remember to end your cycle at home when you're out of dice. Alright. Ah! I lost some energy, chat. I'm getting to get hungry fairly soon, but at least I got money. How are you doing tonight, Andam? Welcome to the stream. <laughs> so, if I you do this, there's a 50% chance it's going to fail. And 50% chance it's just going to be a neutral. So I'm wondering if I can keep this dice for something else. Jago's pulled you to the subject said you perhaps you can repay his kindness in time. I'll pay off Drago's debt. Well, I don't know how much his debt is. And this one over here survived. You need access to corporate pharmaceuticals. Otherwise, this escape with temple will come to a rapid end. Find a doctor. Let's help ourselves first, and then we'll help Drago's when we're not about to die from uh, starvation, apparently. How does this game work? Um, it's basically, it works kind of like a TTRPG. Every time you end the uh, day, it gives you a bunch of randomized dice from 1 to 6. And then you use the dice to take actions along the game. And what kind of, what dice roll you run, either gives you a percentage chance to get a certain outcome. Like for instance, if I use this one, this one, on whole dice section, it gives me a 100% chance of success. But if I use this one, it's only half success so we do this oh yeah it I won the I won the di the uh, coin toss only 50% not bad <laughs> um I guess I could end the day by using this but I want to hold on to this in case I need to uh, have an instant success for something it looks like I made 40 cryptocurrencies as well called cryo So, do I like talk? I need to. F Maybe I should need to find a way to talk to Dragos so I could figure out how much he owes. And if I could see if I could just pay him off, pay off his debt right now. Let's go. Can we talk to Dragos? Hmm. How do I talk to. Just to keep in mind, I only just started this game today and I specifically avoided reading anything about this game so it wouldn't be spoiled so i'm as going to this as blind as you are as y'all y'all are right now mm 
You know what? Oh, I think I understand. In order to complete this thing, you need to get a number of successes. You need to get uh, two, four, six, eight successes, and I got two so far. And I'm assuming this means that in around eight days, if I don't get enough successes, uh, Drago, something bad's gonna happen to Drago's probably. For now, let's go ahead and look around town. Let's meet the locals, at least in this area. Go to the shipyard first. The only way to get to know shipyards to work here, no tourists here. Assist a shipbuilder. You don't have any connections, but you do have skills. If you can get a shipbuilder to notice them, you might be in. All materials. As a newcomer, you can only gain favor by grabbing a load of materials and asking the nearest yard hand where to take them. That isn't so bad. Let's go look up here then. It's like Yahtzee with a story, I guess. I don't really play Yahtzee. <laughs> Let's see what's over here in Doxy for. Hellion Crossing. Merchants willing to run the gondola of the Hellion system are a rare, but those that do always return eventually. So there's no one here right now. That's pretty empty. Old Dock Terminal in the Rotunda. Havenage Security. Have to have plans. Stealing them would be the fastest way to get to know this place and the most dangerous. So if I use this, it would be an instant success. Getting to know the Wotunda doesn't mean new places to visit, it means keeping your eye on the rivals, too. Explore the Rotunda. The Rotunda of the old dock is filled with passageways and concourses, leading to all kinds of docking bays. Havenage runs the run the Rotunda. The security watches the docks. Better to avoid attracting their attention. I guess Heavenage are like the uh, people that run this space station or something? No idea. What's over here? Dock B2? Takes several cycles to reach the Starward Bell and return. Load was scrapped from the old wrecks, so there's nothing there either. Bright Market. Over here, you can ask for directions. Why wander when there are hundreds of people that live and work within the Bright Market? All you need to do is the courage to approach them. It's a good thing I held on to the six sided dot to the six or six dice over here. The smell, sounds, and buzzing activity of the Bright Market make it a dizzying place to wander, but an enticing one too, which is risky. Local knowledge: if you do this three times, apparently you gain this. The Bright Market is the busiest part of the eyes lower. Lower room, you can find anything and everything here. This sounds like an important place to go back to, actually. And this is the low end toll to go to a different part of the station. Sixty, so you need sixty credits to get over there now. So it seems to me like the best thing to do might be to ask for directions. Since this is a critical action, this means that this is can only be done once, as opposed to these repeatable actions over here. Let me check to make sure uh, there aren't any other critical actions that I missed. See, this one's a critical action too. These are all repeatable. I'm going to guess that if I want to find a doctor, my best bet is to look in the bright market. So let's go ahead and use the 100% uh, chance on the critical action here to ask for directions. And what do you know? I had such a positive outcome it immediately completed local knowledge.
We're gonna go ahead and leave this place. And ah, new drive. Build a ship mine. You've heard of talk. You heard talk of a fabric here owned by the Ort Exchange. With that and a few fragments, you could build a ship mine core. I guess ships in this universe are intelligent. That's the impression I'm getting. I'm all out of dice, so it's time to go home and go to sleep. You aren't finished with this cycle. Complete active scenes to proceed. What active scenes? Oh. Ah. Okay, so the, so I did succeed in finding a doctor. Next comes the call from the enforcer at the door. You shuffle down the flickering hallway towards the open apartment door. You keep your head down and your shoulders high in the queue, trying not to bring attention to yourself. You were thankful for the tip-off that a doctor was operating out of this place, but now that you are here, you aren't so sure. The gang enforcer on the door, the flickering light strips, the decaying havelock, they have all made the long queue a test of your nerve. But your options are few, and without a supply of stabilizer, this body, your body, will. You suppress a shiver and shuffle forward to the front of the queue. You try to find something to distract yourself. Let's look inside. You lean against the doorframe and look into the apartment. The entryway is dark, punctuated by the green indicators of stacks of sealed containers. You lean in and see amber light filtering through a far doorway, screened with plastic sheeting, beyond which blurred shapes move. The slap on, of the enforcer's palm against the doorway jerks you awake. Wait your turn, he cr Wait your turn, he growls. After a few moments, a figure pushes through the doorway and you catch a distant voice. Send the next one in, Toshiro. The enforcer jerks his head and you slip inside, passing through the dark entryway and pushing through the plastic sheeting on the far door. The room beyond is bathed in warm light. A floor to ceiling transparent panel gives a full view of the bride market's sealed roof and the buzzing traffic above, and for a moment you are transfixed by the motion. Come, sit, says a sharp voice, and you see a silhouetted figure turned away, replacing the plastic sheeting over the frame of a simple folding bed. You make your way across the room. The figure turns, and as they do, you see an expression of confusion flash across their features. They open their mouth to as if to speak. They blink and then quickly regain their composure. Please sit. They gesture to the bed, then turn to an open case of tools on the table. You sit. Sabine turns, a compact diagnostic scanner of some kind in their hand. They hold it to their eye. Remain still, please. Their tone is clipped and businesslike. You stare ahead, still dazed from their expression when you first entered. Fear, recognition, sadness, unmistakably etched across their face. How long have you been on this station? They ask, the scanner still to their eye. It hasn't been a few cycles. But not answering is rude. A few cycles. They nod. It's good you came to me. They set the diagnostic scanner on a table. I'm going to start by assuming you don't know anything. They take your arm and roll up your sleeve, inspecting your synthetic skin. Your body is dying. They say it without ceremony, without drama, but not without empathy. SNARP doesn't like to see its pro pro proprietary technology let loose. To prevent bodies like yours, frames as they call them, from being stolen, repurposed, or in your case, escaping, they built in a process of so-called planned obsolescence. Frames decay rapidly when not regularly injected with stabilizer, one which SNARP remains the sole producer of. They look up. Sound familiar? Yes. Good. That may help. They swap to your other arm, running some thin metal device over your skin. You feel your forearm tremble. I'm sorry, Sabine says, and you are unsure if they mean for the cold touch of the metal or everything else. 
Emulations like you, sleepers as most people know you, aren't classified as people in any of the surrogate systems. You have no rights, no status. Gee, well that sounds totally familiar, doesn't it? They focus hard on the, insp in the inspection of your arm, and S and ARP has no reason to release stabilizer into the market. Sabine looks up as if to apologize again, but they stop themselves. I know little of this is of use to you. They turn away, disassembling the metal instrument and cleaning it. Silence fills the room as Sabine works, and then the silence gives way to tension. You stare at their back, willing them to say something. Anything. Sabine turns to face you. I may be able to help. They sigh, and you see the darkness under their eyes, hear the fatigue in their voice. They gesture to the door. You saw Toshiro outside? You nod. He works for my... benefactor. Yatagan. They are influential in the low end. They give me this space to work, run the door, and take the profits. At the same time, I have to fix up their enforcers, tend to their implants, sew up their wounds. They look away. I didn't notice it until now, but this is the first time that they used any pronoun that they that they gave Sabine any pronouns. That's really clever. I didn't even realize that until I read this. But Yatagan has connections. Smugglers from the Starward Belt. Mercenaries working for the corporations on Ember. If they can source a stabilizer, maybe we'll have a better chance. Sabine sets down this, their slate, their notes complete. This... this is dangerous. And it'll be expensive. But I think we can do it. Thank you. Sabine walks away to the window, their face dappled by the shadows of passing drones. Let's just see if this works first. I'll let you know when I have a lead. You nod and leave, Sabine still staring out, unmoving. When you reach the lower level of the market, you look back up through the panels of the roof to see if you can see their face. But the room looks dark against the lights of the market. You duck your head and walk off into the crowd. We are barely an hour into this game and I already love this game. This is... The shit that I live for. Let's see what's over here. The flow of chits and components in the exchange is complex, but a sharp eye and some tight trades can net you a good margin. The order exchange is always hungry for new hardware to buy up, break down, and sell off, and you are happy to supply it. Go check out a street food vendor. Emphis is busy, his broad face uplift by the, uplift by the makeshift gas burner in front of him. With precise, delicate movements, he lays thick chunks of marinated fungus into a dented wok, his other hand idly tossing a metal bowl of sliced vegetables and some red flake dressing. It smells incredible. I can't believe, chat, that he is making Szechuan food. You watch as he fulfills a set of orders, heaping the fungus with the bright salad and depositing it in plastic trays. A stack of chits rattles in his apron pocket as customers file past the burner handing over payment. Let us approach him. He joined the queue. It's mostly made of off-duty salvagers, vac suits unzipped and rolled down to expose stained vests, grubby mods, a lattice of scars and tattoos. It is, they discuss the best food on the eye, the best drink, comparing notes on bread market dives, their words cut through the heavy spacer slang. Eventually, I like how a lot of different science fiction uses spacer to refer to people who live in space. I first saw that in Star Wars, but it appears to be everywhere now. Eventually, it's your turn, and you shuffle to the front. Emphis speaks in a deep, 
even tone without looking up. First try is free. And these people are so nice. It's hard to remember. It's funny that you have to remember that you are basically an escape, a runaway slave with no rights. Let's go ahead and thank him, though, for the first try. The smell is almost unbearably strong as he cooks. The earthiness of the fungus laced with something so spicy, the smoke makes your eyes water. The heat from the burner is like a bonfire, and your skin hardens in its glare. I know you, you sleepers. Empha says while he cooks, his voice deep but clear. A hard life. A lot of stories. He glances up from beneath his cap with piercing eyes. I know. Tell him a story. You begin to tell him about your journey to the eye, and he nods as he cooks, his eyes never leaving his work. You tell him of the confusion, the pain, but also the sense of possibility in its sudden arrival. You tell him of the cold of, and dark of the container, and the endless cycles spent within it. Now, it seems, you tell him, like some dream that you once had but can never forget. You tell him that the eye excites you and scares you, and that you are unsure where to walk, where to look, what to do. Eventually, you tail off, running out of words. He places a plastic tray of steaming fungus in your hand. Next time, we can talk some more, he smiles. But next time, you pay. He slams a heavy hand against a button on the burner's side, and it shuts off. The roar of the flame and its impressive heat fades. Next time then, sleeper. He waves you away and begins to oil the walk. Before you turn back to the alley, you notice the geometric patterns of circular scars across his forearms, each surrounded with a constellation of glinting pin marks. You walk away, and as you do, you take a bite of the rich, spicy, delicately sweet fungus. Your taste sensors light up like a fusion reactor. You'll be back. Get to know Emphis. Emphis loves two things, stories and food. Maybe if you sell it, supply him with both, you can hear his story. Ha. I love it. Well, chat, that was our first day on uh what's the name of the station again something about an eye the eye let's just call it the eye and i like to think that we're up to a good start all things considered that's our character right now Let us go ahead and go to sleep. Container. This time you don't wake up. Instead, the ghost of the station, that shifting skeletal ring surrounds you. For a moment you are gone, absent from your own body, stretched out across a colorless void. Then the connections begin to establish themselves, threads tugging on the edge of your mind. These threads become vectors of exchange and then extensions, as you feel your thoughts slipping away down them, dissolving into the millions of, distri of distributed, distributed nodes they connect to you. You see the station, no, you feel the station, like a web of texture in a smooth black liquid. Let's touch it. You find a point in the station and you connect to it, pulse through it, follow loops and paths under and around it. You touch more points than you have fingers and then you try in a moment of impulsiveness to connect them. The flow passes through you so rapidly that you feel yourself being carried with it, splitting and separating, eddying and gathering. As you do, things occur to you, things that you can't possibly know. You reach out to try to grasp them, try to touch them too. You notice a tugging feeling, pulling at you, 
insistently as if it were a small child. Somehow it is pulling in two directions at once. You look down. All of a sudden, everything shuts off. You come back trembling into this unfamiliar body, both yours and not yours all at once. You find yourself standing in the container, eyes now open to dark steel walls. You feel a change within you, a shift. You close your eyes for a second and you feel it waiting there, the station splayed out across your mind, a storm of connective nodes waiting to be explored, and then it is gone. Why did our condition drop so harshly? Damn man, I'm already half dead. What the hell? Now we can buy some fun. We do have some cryo. We have 40 cryo. So I can actually pay him for some breakfast. And I'm kind of worried about the fact that we have less than half health right now. At the same time, I should probably wait until we go through this, uh everything else going on in this uh, station because I'm probably going to lose energy anyway. Ah, who goes there? Dancer Winter, welcome. Long time no see. Thank you for the resub. Thank you. I hope your vacation, are you still on vacation? I hope it's going well. And if it's already over, I hope you had a great vacation. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good night. Ah, my stop. Ah, ah, ah. I cannot stop. I cannot stop. Yep, you're still in vacay. Well, I hope you have a great rest of your vacay. It sounds like you're having fun. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm back from Dragon Con, uh, streaming again, as you could, as you could see. <laughs> do, do, do. Thanks for the resub. Alright, so play the exchange. If I play the exchange, I can probably get some free money, but at the same time, I would prefer I think I want to I want to prefer to help Dragos out instead. Doc B2 is gonna be a while before um the uh ships come in. Wiggle 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 wiggle. And this is not important yet either, I don't think. I suppose if I want to escape, I could probably assist the shipbuilder to haul some materials. But I want to help out my friend Dragos here, since it seems like he could use it. I would do manual salvage, except that. Um, it's a half chance to succeed, which is not augers at all. I presume that doing this gives you actual salvage, and this gives you, like, money. So, let's go ahead and help. Um, let's go ahead and help with the uh, repeatable action over here really quick. I wonder how you talk to Drago so you can repay his debt, though. Because there's no option here to talk to them. Nothing in data or anything like that. I guess when you start off, you don't have that many uh, much in the way of options anyway. Alright, here we go. Hold dissection time. Ah. It worked out, see? We made some money. We succeeded. Not so bad. Just gonna check to make sure there's nothing else we need to be doing around here. It looks like Sabine surgery is gonna be done in like three days or so. So we should be making ourselves some money anyway. I need to win this dice roll twice. Oh, here we go. I won the dice roll again. So we're at halfway done with this. And now I just have one more here. 
Can I win a deck? Can I can I win the uh, coin toss a second time? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Probability has favored me. I have somehow gone a, I have somehow won a coin toss twice in a row, chat. Twice in a row. Uh, so far, Sar Sar Werewolf, this game is actually fairly fun. It's a uh, kind of slow pace, but the writing is excellent. It does it definitely does feel like a TTRPG, a single player, uh, tabletop role playing game, as you can tell from the dice rolls and from the actions you can do. All right, so uh, nothing bad happened to me, interestingly enough. I have 85 credit chips, so. I think now that the day is over, I can probably go ahead and buy some food. At the same time, Sabine says that she's sourcing stabilizer, but I don't know how much a stabilizer costs. She didn't say, or they didn't say. I can't imagine that the game's going to force me to try and buy stabilizer anyway when three days is up, so it's probably better to get to know Emphis anyway. So I'm at uh, two bars here, and I want to be higher. I want to be over here. Let's eat some food. Ah, see, full. We have full bars now, which means that tomorrow's cycle, we should hopefully get all the dice, right? At least. Well, I could, or maybe it's because this condition monitor over here is dropping like crazy. You know what? Actually, that's probably how it works. This condition monitor is dropping, which is why I only have three dice now instead of four. I can't play a stock market here anymore because... I could pay to go to low end. But... Eh, let's save our money. For now. Let's go ahead and go to sleep for now. See what happens tomorrow. Again, the skeleton ring of the station fills your mind. It sparkles with glittering lights like stars reflected in a winter lake. It is clearer, crisper than before. The threads still pull, but you remain in place, flickering in the flow. Between the threads, you see bright shapes, caches of simmer shimmering light beneath transparent crystal forms. You follow the path of a thread across the ring through these forms and leap off into the void. You begin to understand. These are nodes and connections, a map of information, of communication. There are so many layers, so many loops that it seems almost impossible to parse, but you begin to try. Let's focus on the threads. There are more threads than you can count. You choose one that passes nearby and you approach it. As you inspect it, you understand why you instinctively chose the word thread when you first saw them. They are not single lines, but rough fuzzy things woven from data strings of all kinds. The threads and nodes, passages and puzzle boxes, one leads to another. There is so much here, so many answers, so many questions. All you need to do is to follow the paths and open the boxes. You look out across this ghost landscape of exchange and see an opportunity. But then you but then the insistent tugging again, pulling at you. You look down again and see two lines, two threads pulling in different directions, as if they were tied around you. Let's start with the first. The first thread leads out, away from the station, into the inky black. Someone out there is tracking you, hunting you, following the thread to you. They are in a ship, and the ship is approaching ever closer with each cycle. The second. The second thread leads in, pulling deep into the station. Your gaze follows it, and this time you see something, a sphere shimmering above a strange, angular body. A pulse shoots out from it, passing over you like a torch beam, testing you, hasting you. You open your eyes. Time is short. Well, that's not spooky at all. The cloud. Something has changed inside you. You can now access the data cloud of the eye, a network of decaying protocols and data caches. While there, you can use dice and items to ex access these systems and extract data. But be careful, these networks are old and strange. 
click the I button at the top of the screen to toggle this view on and off. The plot thickens, chat. Wow. So we need to do a little hacking is what's going on here. The data here is part of a cache. Dog. Data actions allow you to extract data from the Android parts of the eye. They work like dice actions, but in order to unlock them, you must match your dice to the one displayed on the right of the action. So this needs to be two. If you have a plus one or a plus two modifier and in interface skill, you will be given more possible dice to match. You can use any dice that matches the one displayed. Oh, that's really cool. Hey, Price Potato, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> Welcome to the stream. We are playing Citizen Sleeper. Tirepunk uh, scavenging action. <laughs> the data here is part of a cache tucked away during the collapse. Who hid this and for what purpose? Sadly, I do not have any matching dice that I can use for this, so we'll have to avoid that for now. I'm doing great, thank you. Thanks for asking. I'm loving this game so far. Overwhelmingly positive indeed. A Heaven Edge member is broadcasting in the op on the open network from here, leaving them open to data extraction. Once again, I cannot use this one either because I need a 2 or a 3. Sadly. What about over here? A lone connection feeds into this isolated node. Its last access time set was a thousand cycles ago. Damn. So we can use this for this. We'll have to check that out later. Let's go look at our other options for today. Okay. I am back. I hear you enjoying the game. That's great. Indeed I am. <laughs> Welcome back. This gate conceals a network of systems which have been untouched since the Solheim collapse, whatever a Solheim is. Keynote 4693. This node is orbited by the remains of a corporate countermeasure broken long ago by hackers. <laughs> How cute. This node pulses faintly as it mines cryo at a glacial pace abandoned by the hacker to repurpose it. I wonder if I'll get to get all that cryo that's been mined. But before we use any of our dice, we must check around and see what else we can be doing with our time. Unfortunately, time is running out for a good old Dragos, but as you can see here, we're getting fairly close to uh, getting back in business. In one more cycle, Sabine's surgery, Sabine's going to be able to find enough stabilizer. So the question becomes, what do I use my actions on? I can already tell you that I might as well use these two on the mining, on the uh, sh on the scrapyard stuff, because you can't use it for any of these things anyway. That's already an option for me. I'm curious what's going to be behind this node and if it's worth using one of my dice for. Let's go ahead and help our friend Dragos out first, I think. If we do this, we can get some salvage to sell. But if we do this, we just get paid money. It's impossible to fail that, too.
Choices, choices, choices. I'm going to play it safe. There you go. Got some more credits. If I succeed in this last one, we will complete this back in business thing already. It's a die it's a coin toss though. Here we go. Here we go. Fuck. That did not count as a success unfortunately. Took a little bit of energy. I lost some energy there. I am swarm. I did manage to get some credits regardless, though. Our body is still deteriorating at an even pace, but tomorrow we should be able to find some. Sur we should be able to get some. Uh, some neuropoison. Let's also go ahead and feed ourselves. I'm really hoping that the. Uh, Near poison the um the f the uh, robo fluid that she's preparing for me will not cost that much. We're gonna eat ourselves some nice uh, Szechuan fungus. All right. With all of our action points stem for a day, let's go ahead and end the cycle. Someone's out there hunting me too, which is kind of a problem. These are decent dice. Three, one, four. As you close up, a voice that goes down the cords towards you. Sleeper, wait up. Turn. Bang is coming down the corridor. Towards you, a wonky grin in his broad face. Hey, glad I caught you. Do I know you? He grins. You do now. He puts a hand on your arm. I've seen you hanging around. Just out, want, just want to chat. One second, chat. I have to rearrange my purples here. There we go. I've seen you hanging around, just want to chat. You staying in that thing? He nods back to co to the container, shaking his head. Rough. It can be hard to get a star on the aisle. On the eye. He looks away down the passage. What was it old Erlen said? The eye opens for us all? Nice idea, but, well, not always very practical. He glances back at you. We do our best, but it isn't easy. We? You pass together into the main hall walkway. Cavendish. We are all one dysfunctional family. Bang puts an arm around you. I'm not part of the security branch, though. Don't worry. I'm with systems. Have an inch? Think of us as an administrative association for the eye. Depending on who you talk to, we may either emerge as a response to, or a continuation of, Andre Erlen's original union. He smiles. Personally, I avoid the topic. He stops you in the quiet passage. Look. That's not what I'm here to discuss. I've been seeing some unusual network activity in, well, I know a little about you sleepers. I have a small proposition for you, he glances around, but this is not the place for it. I have an office just across the way. Give me a cycle or two to prepare, then when you are settled, stop by. He lowers his voice and gives you a dark look. In truth, I need you. If what they say is true about you sleepers, well, there's work to be done. He pats you on the back. His voice bright and his dark look suddenly gone. Stay clean, sleeper. He walks off down the passage, raising a hand in farewell. The plot thickens. Am I winning, Malefic? Uh, so far, I think I am winning. I got a decent amount of cash. I've been getting decent dice rolls. I've only gotten one failure so far. And I will have around half health left. So... Given the first uh, hour and a half of the scheme, I'd say I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing, Malefic? Thanks for coming to the stream. 
Okay, so we just need to succeed one of these once more, and then we can hopefully uh, help out our friend here, Dragos. Back in business. Okay, so I made some money. And I got back in business done. So now we could talk to Dragos. I'm doing good. Been looking for a bit. Oh, cool. Thank you for your lurk. <laughs> you arrive into a buzz of activity at the yard. Red blinking lights flash across a vast dark shape suspended below the dome. They flicker across scorched hull plates and bent structures, spilling from holes in a twisted shape. The cutter is huge and has been torn apart in some violent encounter. She, she's a beauty, isn't she? Drago stands to the side, focus on the hulking ship as it is lowered to the yard. She is. I should thank you. This place was on its last legs when you turned up, and now look at this. The ship descends slowly, its interior visible through multiple hull breaches. You struggle to gather the same enthusiasm as Drago's for this monstrous craft, but and you can't help but think of what it's of what become of its crew. What happened? What do you mean? He glances at you. I managed to convince our salvager friends to give it to me on credit, that's what happened. No, what happened to the ship? Not my concern, he shrugs. The ship creaks like a calving iceberg as it reaches the base of the yard. Dragos is visibly excited. I, I know you. S I know I said you shouldn't stick around, but I'm going to need some help with this one. Thro the drones start to crawl over the Hulk. Their lights illuminating flashes of dented hull. Watching, you wonder if you arrived in a similar fashion, locked inside that container. The wreck of the SNR freighter, lowered into the yard like a corpse ready to be butchered. Or was the container delivered to Dragos on its own, a womb for your rebirth into this strange station? You shudder. Perhaps if you could learn something about this ship, you might be able to trace the path that led you to this yard. Dragos squeezes your shoulder. After these past cycles, I think we are up to it. What do you think? You see the fading name of the ship emplaced on its side. Winter Light. Let's do it. He claps you in the back. Glad to hear it. Come back in a few and we can make a start. A real beauty, Dragos repeats, perhaps just to himself. You take one last look at the shattered ship as the drones start cutting and then slip out of the yard, feeling suddenly cold in the empty passage. Achievement unlocked, paid off. You completed your first drive. Each drive completed unlocks an upgrade point to spend on upgrading your character. Okay, so we're supposed to be completing the drives. Access your character menu via the arrow buttons at the top of right of the screen. Cool. What to upgrade, chap? Photosynthetic skin seems important. We can recover energy at home. This one, however, is pretty good, too. Or, I could save my upgrade points for later. Get one of these things. It looks like I actually need to select the previous one first, though. I wonder why I can choose one of these, but not this one. Like, there's a negative one on here for some reason. Huh. 
Oh, you know why? Because I have zero in these. And have negative one in endure. By design. Choices, choices, choices. I think I'll need to modify the my leap motion tracker later. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know which one needs to get. I feel like Intuit's important. Especially for instant karma. We roll all of your dice once per cycle. That's pretty damn good. Only as a last resort, though. Don't really need icebreaker. I need to do predictive reasoning. All right. Go talk to Sabine really quick. The first thing you see on entering is the glint of Toshiro's implants, like a cat's eyes in the dark of the corridor. He nods you in as you arrive at Sabine's door. The entryway is still dark, and you push through the sheeting into the surgery. I have it. Sabine stands with a case open in front of them. A set of vials lined up inside, separated by foam inserts. They pick one up, rotating it in a warm light. I have no idea how Yatagan they trail off. We should treat this with caution. It looks authentic, but I have no idea if it really is what it appears to be. I'm the test case? It seems to be the case. Unfortunately, I'm not sure we have another choice. I guess you're free to sit in the bed. The stabilizer works under a similar principle to an immunosuppressant and a transplant operation, in that it stops your body from rejecting an unfamiliar part of itself. In the case of your frame, the unfamiliar part is each of your biosynthetic organ groups, which over time are identified by your body as foreign material and therefore must be eliminated. Sabine holds up a vial of the would-be stabilizer. However, unlike an immunosuppressant, the stabilizer doesn't do this by limiting your entire immune system. Instead, it re-encodes re your biosynthetic organs with new protein chains, which act as passcodes within your immune system. The stabilizer refreshes those passcodes, keeping your frame from injecting all of its own organs. In very basic terms, yes, they sigh. Look, what matters here is that the stabilizer should be able to encode any organic or biosynthetic matter to be accepted by your immune system. They glance away. At least if the stabilizer is genuine, the only way to know for sure is to inject the vial. They begin readying the syringe. It will, I will start with a small dose to limit the risk. Sabine cracks the glass neck of the stabilizer vial and uses a syringe to extract it for a fraction of the liquid. They tap the syringe and you watch as if any sign might emerge from the clear liquid. You barely feel the needle, your frame registering the initial injection but with little response. A sensation begins to spread from the side, a fizzing, trembling wave that disperses through your arm with incredible speed. Your vision goes white and when it returns, Sabine appears encased in shards of sparkling light that slowly fade into darkness as you settle back and get to bed. Thank you for the hydrate and the posture shack. You know, I just noticed something. I'm not having an issue this time where I feel lightheaded from talking. Remember I was having that problem earlier when I was trying to, when I was doing a writing workshop a few weeks ago? I wonder why it's not happening now. 
<laughs> what else did you notice? What did you notice? We're all ears. You notice the keys we turn off. Then boy, why do you do this? I am not cute. Not cute. Not cute, not cute. Thank you for the head pad. <laughs> thank, thank you for that. Cutest, not just... Yeah, sure. You're just saying that. Mm. Alright then. A sensation begin. Oh, wait, I already read that. You swim in darkness, muffled noises like an argument heard from underwater, prickling waves of cold. When you sit back up, Sabine is sitting in a chair by the window, facing away from you, backlit by the glow of the slate. Awake? Yes. The stabilizer is genuine. They sit down beside the bed. I don't know how Yatagan acquired a case of this stuff, but they did. Sabine looks troubled, distracted. You should rest some more, but you are going to have to do that somewhere else. They get you to the door. I have other patients. Sorry. The bean nods toward the case. I'm afraid I can't offer you any more doses. You're going to need to pay for your next dose. Silence fills the room and they return to their glowing slate. Looking around the room, it seems different somehow, as if things have moved or shifted. You wonder how long you've been out. Sabine? Nothing comes free, sleeper. Remember that. You manage to get to your feet and wander out into the hallway. The queue stretches down the flickering corridor. Toshiro stands impatiently by the door and fixes you with a glare as you leave. You lower your eyes as you stumble past, somehow faintly aware of the station spinning beneath you. So now we have to buy a vial of stabilizer. This blasted ship came into the same yard as you did. Is there a connection or are you just paranoid? Eat at emphasis stole. Build a ship mind. That'd be interesting. Looks like some interesting people are coming into the docks fairly soon, too. I wonder if we're supposed to escape this uh, station entirely since someone's hunting me. Or maybe I'm supposed to just change locations. I have two dice level, a three and a one. This is not very good, uh, these aren't actually very good, uh, dice, I'm not gonna lie. Can't unlock that. Oh, oh, god, I'm covered in slime. What have you done, Malefic? If you wanted to slime me, you could have just asked. Anyway. What do we got going on here? I can't access any of these nodes because I don't have the proper dice for them, unfortunately. But I do have one for this. I'm curious what this node would show us. First off, let me go check uh, Dragos' yard.
I want to do this, honestly. Even though it's going to take a while. <laughs> I think our best bet for now is to try and go through some forensics to figure out what's up with the uh, winter light. Because this only pay this pays you money, sure, but we don't really we're not really hard up for cash right now. Ah, fuck. We failed that one. There's a 25% chance. Oh well. Could be worse. At least we didn't get hurt in the process. Now then, let's go ahead and see what's inside this node, shall we? We have an encrypted key, apparently. Unable to unlock the station's aging maglocks? Interesting. I wonder what maglocks it can open. Unavailable to me, apparently. I'm wondering if I should have gotten this one instead because it could have given me some credits. Maybe those options will be available later. Let's go ahead and get some grub. So that tomorrow we can start with five dice. It's gonna be good. We're gonna have a lot to do tomorrow, chat. Time to end the cycle. Awesome. Five dice. Very good. Alright then. Go talk to Heavenage. He was got for us. Sleeper then catches your attention as you approach the Heavenage building, leaning against the bay door to decide the entrance. You approach. Easier to come in this way. Security, all that. He gives you a look, you know. He slams a button on the bay and the bay creaks open, blinking lights in the dark behind it. You follow Feng inside. Truth be told, I don't spend much time upstairs. This is where I work. The door hisses as it closes behind you. The bay is filled with pieces of hardware, all rigged up to generators and diagnostic slates and things you don't recognize that glow with blue screen light. There is a chorus of hums that blends into the single wave of static filling the dark corners of the room. Feng leans in on a service deck and gestures around you. You like it? It's incredible. He smiles wildly. I thought you'd say that. He taps a nearby server stack which bleeps in response. This is my treasure trove, all dredged up from the sea of systems we call the eye. You wouldn't believe what this place runs on. He steps over to a towering block speckled with vents. Some of these systems are from the original station, AE-1, the one Solheim built. We've had to invent new components, repair things we never built, Reverse engineer entire subsystems into existence. Residents here look up at the eye and think they are seeing a constant concrete reality. But this place is a system that is in constant, in constant flux, decaying and growing, collapsing into new configurations. He walks down between the hardware stacks and you follow. We are keeping this place alive, but also remaking it into something new, dragging it away from those corporate origins. He stops. At least that's what I'm trying to do. He turns back to face you among the flickering machines, humming all around you. I know you can see this too, Sleeper. All these systems in the sections. You can, can't you? I can see it. It makes sense, right? You are between here and there, between the people and their systems. You light this place up like a beacon. 
That's what I need. You glance at the lights around you, and as you do, they seem to flicker, to realign, to follow your gaze. Feng notices it too. I'm guessing being a beacon isn't always ideal when you are on the run, though, huh? They are tracking me. He pats you on the shoulder. Maybe I can help with that. There's a lot of old growth in this place. Subsystems I can't see. Access protocols lost to time and decay. Secrets. A shitload of secrets. With your help, I can unlock this place. Break off those last ghost limbs of corporate control. He lowers his voice below the hum. Even in Heavenage, there is old growth. Those whose roots trace back into those bad old days. You help me dredge up that past. You help me dredge up the past, and I'll see what I can do about that tracker of yours. He winks. What do you say, sleeper? I'm in. Feng pumps his fist and claps you on the shoulder. He meets your eye. You won't regret it, sleeper. Feng passes you a ragged-looking metal, metal tab. A gift, he says. It's a Solheim cipher. I dug it up from the depths of the station. Slot that into an old network gate and you'll be able to pull out all kinds of secrets from the nodes inside. He walks you back to the front of the bay. Start by bringing me whatever you can turn up. Use that emulated mind of yours and see what's out there. You'll get a picture of how things are. Those above, he nods at the ceiling, have granted me an acquisitions budget. I can pay you for whatever useful data you bring in. I know you need it. He slams the door button again. Keep it quiet and keep it clean, sleeper, and I'll see you soon. You step, blinking. You step, blinking, back out into the passage, those flickering lights still in the back of your mind. Disable your tracker. We're getting to the point now, chat, where we have so much shit to do. So many things to do, so little time. Let's see what we can find behind the Solheim cipher over here. With a squawk of noise, the old gate flips open, granting access. The Solheim daemon attempts to protect its note, squeaking out protective protocols like a mantra. The NIST network storage holds corporate records, most of them corrupted by a failed system purge. This node is orbited by the remains of corporate countermeasure broken long ago by hackers. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder how much a vial stabilizer is though. Oh, wait, a scrap freighter. You can buy some scrap. If we're lucky. However, the freighter crew are eager to get their payload into the ore exchange and they'll pay a wage to anyone willing to help them. This would give me 30 cryo. Choices, choices, chat. If we buy some scrap here. We can either use it to build something over here in the shipyard, I imagine. Or. We could give it here.
So many choices, chat. Oh, it only costs a hundred... It only costs a hundred chits. That's really cheap. I have 95 chits. And I could sell data over here. The fang. So there's a lot of choices. We should probably buy a vial stabilizer so we don't die anytime soon there. And we'll need Fang's help anyway to remove this tracker so I don't get hunted down. I... I just fucking ended the cycle without using any of my dice by accident because I'm fucking dumb. I hope the game didn't save. I really hope the game did not save before I push that button because I'm going to be upset at my own stupidity. Oh, thank goodness. The game did not save chat. I was able to act quickly enough. Good. Because that was mad stupid what I just did. So yeah. So, um... Let's not accidentally fuck up again. Chat. This music's excellent, by the way. I would love to just use this as background music for other streams. Let's go ahead and break into Solheim. Data extracted. As you drift back from the nodes, something latches onto you. A thread strung tight around you, it tethers you in place. A taste, the voice makes you shiver. It soars somehow both distant and close behind your ear. You see a distant glint of light shut off, and then suddenly a shape is at your side. It stalks around you, circling like a shark, like a wolf. Entity unknown, astringent, processing. Stay still. Oh my god, what is that thing? Please hold. The thread around you thickens until it is a ring, a cylinder, a tunnel of light circled around you. It is blinding for a moment, and then it is gone. As it fades, you see a figure, a creature, in front of you. Its strange head flickers between different angles, reading you. What are you? The shape paces around you on lift legs, although there is no ground here to pace on. Entity, identify, origin, serial, cadence, the figure paces you expectantly. Sleeper, SNR. Unknown, known, the figure's strange head rotates. Brackish signature. Of and not of, attempting interface. As the figure speaks, more threads begin to spiral from its head. A thick, a thick, snaking, vine-like ribbons that flex and wave. They approach with intent. Well, that's fucking scary as shit.
Let's ask him to stop, see what happens. The figure halts its threads, its head twitching. Entity, your identity is unknown. We only seek to correct illegalities. Can you confirm your legal right to sentience? What the fuck? <laughs> I feel so offended. Do you mean to tell me that I need to prove that I am a sentient thing? You know what I have to say to that? This sentence is false. Fuck, oh, that hurt to say just now. I'm a person. Incorrect, you are an entity. All at once, a hunter's head is directly in front of yours, blocking your vision. You stink of their taste, the one from the sealed dock. Hunter shimmers with fury. I will find access. I will interface. Sealed dock? An entity hides in the rotunda. You are its puppet. Huh? Hunter extends a razor edge thread. I will not be diverted from my task. It glows with murderous intent. Strike. You lash out with all your force, not a physical strike, but a focusing a, but a focusing a spike of interference, leaving out like a tip of a spear. Hunter stumbles, shifts, and separates. Wake up. You open your eyes, blinking back into the station lights, shaking with fear. Well, that was totally freaky. This has cryo in it. It does. Not much though. Oh, we got an encrypted key. go ahead and see how much Feng is going to pay me for this data, for this delicious, delicious data. Fifteen credits. Not bad. Now we can purchase a vial of stabilizer. Let's go ahead and put some money there. Looks like we don't get to talk to Sabine though. As you quickly leave the surgery, eager to be away from Toshiro's glaze, you notice something wrapped around the stabilizer vial, clutched tightly in your hand. You open your hand in a thin film marked with holes and sigils and rolls from around the vial. At one end of it has a hard metal strip, a handle. Inspect the film. You hold the cloudy film up to the light. It is perforated with an ornate pattern of holes. You can make out a pat word among the markings. Pass key. Is this an entry key for somewhere? Inspect the handle. The metal handle is worn and pitted, but you can see a set of numbers imprinted onto it. 207 slash slash hep then crudely scratch into the handle at some later date low end for a moment you consider going back to the surgery to return the key and then quickly think better of it did sabine want you to have this or is hotoshiro passing on a message time to head to low end and find out and we have another upgrade point chat
gonna save up our uh, skill points so we can get instant karma later. We're also going to use... Eh, we're going to hold off on ordering some fungus for now. We still have some decent energy left. Low end gate costs 60 creds though. This is obviously a problem. I wonder if we can bypass it somehow. Oh. Hunter. If you... It looks like if you stay in the network for too long, you get hunted by the hunter. Well, that's not good. That's not very pog. With my current dice, I could probably do the last two. I could actually do the last two Solheim nodes. And I just need to do two more to get scoping the systems. So we can do that really quick, I guess. Extract the data. Yeah, Hunter is definitely getting upset for me being here. Let's get the last of the Solheim nodes and we'll be good to go. And deliver our data now. For some nice profit. As you enter the bay, Feng is nowhere to be seen. The banks and servers and machines blink out of the dark and staccato rhythms, unseeing eyes of the station's digital ghosts. Shitheads! Feng's voice, Feng's voice echoes from behind a stack, followed by the hammer of a fist on a metal casing. These snaky shitheads. Who's snaky? Sleeper! Feng's, smile pops head, Feng's smiling head pops out from behind the stack. Just the emulated consciousness, I, just the emulated consciousness I've been eager to see. Come back here. You pick your way th between the thrumming stacks, trying not to trip on the loose bundles of cables that blanket the dark floor. Feng is sat in the front of a set of monitors mounted to a stack. Tell me, sleeper, what do you see here? Feng waves at a monitor to his side, glowing with pale lists of information. You lean in closer, looking for the links in the data. The tables seem to be filled with personal information, names, genders, dates, ID numbers, and all the markers of institutional records. <laughs> Shit, that's... Uh... Quiet. He taps the terminal. I pulled these from the old data he brought in. All employees of the eye's original owner is Solheim. But, he leans past you and scrolls the list down. This one, this is a snaky shithead. He stabs at the screen with a finger. The name reads Harden Hurst. Who's Harden? That, says Fang, giving you a sideways look, is the thing. He drags a stool out beside him and motions for you to sit. There's, there just so happens to be a Harden Hurst in Havenage. In Havenage? 
That's it. He's right here in the station now. Fang leans back in his chair. Just think about it. Decades ago, Harden worked in the station as a... Fang leans across to look at the monitor. Senior Strategic Operations Executive. Fang raises his eyebrow at you. Our Harden was keeping the money coming in for Solheim. He defined priority growth initiatives, but making sure the extractors they contracted out to were hooked into a system that outsourced all the risk and kept the profit. Good old Hardin shuttled thousands of palladium rush workers into an infrastructure which meant into an infrastructure which meant that their cut of the work they did went straight back to Solheim. How do you know this? I grew up here, sleeper. This is my history. I am a child of the collapse. Feng turns back to his screen, staring hard at the strings of code flickering by. Before I was born, my parents were Solheim contractors. They ate in Solheim canteens, worked on Solheim ships, they breathed Solheim air, and slept in Solheim beds. Feng's, voices, Feng's voice rises as he speaks, his hands, his hands fist on the terminal edge. And the work that paid for the existence, the cycles of hard extraction out in the belt, Solheim took their cut. This was a company town, so to speak, and my parents were just another in a long line of freelance contractors willing to risk their lives for a shot at anything other than poverty. Disposable. This guy... Stabbing at Hardin once again with his finger. What is wrong with my leap motion? Hmm. That's really weird. Why are you doing this leap motion? Give me a second here, chat. I'm gonna take a quick break here to recalibrate my leap motion, uh, my hands, so to speak. Because I should be able to just do this. Go here to lead motion settings. Oh, I see the problem. Let me turn it up. I have to do this. There we go. Alright, take a look closer look at my settings here. Action range should be at max. see the problem. Position forward. Go ahead and why is it so low? That's why.
Okay, I understand why I did that now. Should be probably right below. better sorry about that chat just had to fix some lead motion settings that's all much better let me turn this on okay good more accurate or, or at least kind of more accurate Hard to tell. This is still very experimental technology, after all. Like for some reason, when I move it up here, probably just get the camera to face me instead of facing out from my chest, huh? It'd be more natural that way. If I raise this any further, this wouldn't make any, oh, some of these things wouldn't make any sense. Understand now. Okay. These are not exact sciences, chat. As I said now, then where was I? Oh yeah, this guy stabbing it hard and once more, once again with his finger. Weird that I have to in order to point at things. I have to like. I guess I never really had to point at things before, so that's why. It seems so strange, but if I'm just like talking normally like this, my expressions work just fine. Just stuff I don't really think about. Interesting. I'll have to do some more calibrations later to see what's best as far as facial expressions and arm expressions and whatnot are. But y'all don't, don't seem to mind that much, do you? Alright, so let's get back to the game. Have a good nap, Malefic. <laughs> this guy, stabbing at Harden once again with his finger, strategized all that, did the sums. And then somehow, thousands and thousands of cycles later, is still going, still here, crawling in the walls like some shithead snake. He survived the revolution. But how? These guys, they were big time. There's a lot of money that can get you. Excuse me. There's a lot of money can get you if you're a company man. But how is Harden still kicking? I don't really, I really don't know. He turns to you and smiles. So we're going to find out. Harden is now a big shot in the shipyards. Just a few degrees back around the eye from here. Havanage... Havanage may have been might be born out of Erland's revolutionary zeal, but a flat hierarchy it is not. Harden happened to float to the top. Fang zooms in on our far yards, on the far on out in on the far yards. Fang grimaces. The thing is, I don't have access to those systems. The shipyard crew is pretty paranoid and they don't like anyone from systems digging around in their stuff. Plus we need more than just the name of a Solheim executive. We need proof. Fang holds up a thumbnail-sized drive. 
that's where this little creation of mine comes in. I call it a ripper worm. It turns the drive in between his fingers. It'll rip through any digital storage and spin out like a silken thread of filter data. Spin out a silken thread of filter data. This one is set on the scent of Hardener first. Getting into the compound might be tricky. It puts a hand on your shoulder, but you, however, have a particular knack for remote access. If you can extract yourself a Havenage cipher from a Havenage agent, they sometimes carry them among their data caches. You can crack open the compounds into the network and slot the worm in through any open port. You never even need to go near the shipyards. I knew it. I knew you'd come have be happy to catch this snake, and don't worry, once we nail this guy, I'll start work on that cracker of yours. I haven't forgotten. He scratches his chin. Anything the worm gets, they'll send back here to me. There's something wrong here, and I mean to get to the wrong core of it. You leave Fang, digging through data amongst the wires, the machines of the old station. As you walk out, you try to imagine the eye as it once was, a vast machine running smooth and strong, directed by people like Harden. A vast Solheim built machine to which thousands poured from the surrogate systems looking for a new life. The hope of a better future engineered to line someone else's pockets. It's an idea you are intimately familiar with. You think of Hardin, still alive, still part of his place, and wonder if the past is ever truly past. You know, that's a very good question. What to do now? I wonder if we can get the ore fabricator from the exchange. So we did have to play this a few times to do it. That'd be interesting. But for now, let's go ahead and continue Dragos's decaying shipyard. And a piece of scrap, no less. He even got uh, two rounds here completed because of that. Dragos seems increasingly nervous about your presence in his yard. You're not sure he's going to hold his nerve much longer. I wonder why. I mean, he helped us out the last time, didn't he? Well, time to go to bed. Actually, we should probably go and try and visit... Um, try and visit the low... Go get past the low-end gate later. Good thing we decided not to buy any food just yet, because god damn that's low. But we got two of these now, that's wild.
let us go. We will go ahead and... Actually, we don't need to use that just yet. Let's see if we can get something out of a Yatagan agent. If we can, I mean. Unfortunately, oh wait, we can actually open this one. What are you talking about, buddy? Oh. So we can gain access to a Havenage system now. They've done it twice, in fact. Let's get ourselves inside here. We are inside the gate. Looks like the hunter is getting angry. That could be dangerous. And we're gonna go ahead and slot a ripper worm in there. Godspeed, little one. Uh oh, the hunter is getting angry. Let's go ahead and leave here for now. I wonder what a Feng has to say about that. So it'll take about three cycles. That should be just enough time to get deal with his tracker before I get hunted. I can't believe I got two, fo two uh, perfects here. I'm getting some really good rolls this will run through. It's gonna cost a bit to get there though. Can't sell anything to Fang anymore. Let's go ahead and make our way through here, I suppose. Do I need to use up the perfect ones, or can I just use the fours? Let's look around first before we do anything too rash. They aren't here yet. How much are they willing to sell to pay me for these components anyway? Twelve cryo? That's not too bad. We can wait a little bit before we can actually wait a little bit before going to the next section anyway. Go ahead and order some fungus. We are now a fungus fan. Feels good, man. Sleeper! Emphas calls to you, a booming voice that echoes through the corridor. Tell me a story. He throws a handful of chopped mushrooms into his walk, the fire leaping up to meet the oil. I see you. Cycle in, cycle out, but we never speak. Tell me a story. What kind? Any kind. He pauses to drizzle something from a plastic bottle into the walk. 
But one of yours, he looks up at you. Nothing stolen. You pause, their spices rich in your nostrils, and think about the kind of story you'd like to tell Emphis. You look at Emphis, the listener, and imagine he has heard it all before. Perhaps he would enjoy a strange story, something with spice. Let's tell him about our dreams. All the sleepers you tell Emphis have dreams. Some were simple memories left over from the emulation process that had become tangled up in their minds and would come out when he slept. It wasn't rare to hear a sleeper in the dorm scream in the dorms scream or cry out in the night. But your dreams, those grey skeletal after images of systems and structures of threads and patterns, weren't like the others. They weren't memories or nightmares, they were reflections of reality, distorted, yes, but somehow true. You learned back then to keep quiet about them, to let them flow through your mind like water. That was until now, until you arrived in this place. Now your dreams colonize your waking life. They slip behind your eyelids with every blink, and now you understand they aren't dreams at all, but some process of interfacing, of speaking, a living in another world that flows through this one like smoke through air. You tell them that you do not know if there is a reason for your dreams. Perhaps you reason it is just some side effect or a particular quality of the frame you inhabit. But whatever it is, it is a gift, and you hope to make use of it. Emphis finishes cooking and squints a little at you. Sleeper, he smiles. You are quite the storyteller. He eyes you, and you realize that he is trying to gauge how honest you have been in your story. Emphis passes you the meal that he has cooked, and you take it gratefully. As you eat, he talks, a natural exchange. Thank you, sleeper. He looks around at the emptying market. But my time is done for today, and I do not want to keep you longer, so I will make a proposal. He gestures to the plastic boxes of ingredients stacked behind his stall. These are good enough for most, but someone told me a story that made me think a couple of cycles ago. A couple of cycles ago. They said that across the gap, in the greenway, fresh mushrooms grow. Have you heard this? No. Neither had I, but I trust the one who told me. Enthus begins packing up his things. Can you bring me some? I cannot cross the gap, and I worry about leaving my things behind. He smiles. I am sure a storyteller like you could handle the trip. I will prepare them for you, and, if you wish to tell it, be the audience of another story. Agreed. Good, booms Emphis. Then I will wait for you to bring them. Emphis slides his walk away and straightens up. I will prepare a recipe then, sleeper. Good luck with your foraging. You turn away and walk back into the main market, the rich taste of Emphasis' food still lingering in your mouth. Stories for you for food, you think, a trade that seems more than fair. Dang, if I knew that I was going to bring up my uh, hunger meter, I would have just talked to him the next day. Now I know better. Your career world for Koss. Let's go ahead and fix up the shipyard before we go. Before Regos gets angry at us. We're gonna use the guarantees for this one. This could be it. If we get lucky with this one, we might actually be able to beat this section this section already. And we do. 
Winter light's been completed. Awesome. I think I went to a bunch of, got a bunch of scrap from my trouble as well, along with a ship mine fragment. Squeeze into the office at the entrance to the yard. Yard, yard. You lay out everything you have on your winter on the winter light across the metal desk. Your makeshift forensic notes glow on Dragos's old writing slate, overlapping lines and scrawled annotations. A set of drone scans fill the small terminal with a spectrum of colors, a heat map of damage and decay. A crumpled printout from the office's ship registry lies beside them. Synthetic paper so thin it almost it's almost transparent. Look at the printout. The plain list shows the registration history of the winter light, the gaps between the entries tantalizingly opaque. Its first registration was a couple thousand cycles ago on this very station, logged at the central hub. From here, the registry tells the story of a busy ship, one that rarely stayed on station for more than a few cycles, and often took on voyages that kept it away from the eye for up to a hundred cycles. The winter light got little rest. Your attempts at a reconstruction of the winter light before its fatal accident consists of a series of overlapping sketches and diagrams showing possible layouts and configurations of the gutted cutter. This was no off-the-shelf model, it was heavily modified, parts replaced with inventive configurations, the new retro fitted the new retrofitted into the old handmade joints and reconditioned filters. This was someone's pride and joy, a lifetime project of running with care intuition. It also contained a set of hidden compartments. You missed them at first, where the hull had been thickened. The corners ran to disguise the change, but they are there. Reactor failure. That is the verdict that anyone would have returned after a cursory glance at these stacked heat maps of the remains of the winter light. On the terminal screen, the ship is shown in section, blotches of color marking the approximate damage the ship sustained. Dominating the view is a single blood-red rose radiating, radiating from the ship's fraction drive. Simple story. A catastrophic failure of the drive core leading to a fatal hull breach. A well-documented failure likely brought on by wear or misuse. But you aren't looking at the rose of the reactor. You are looking at a smaller, paler mark, one that might be easy to miss at first glance. It is thumbprint sized and delicately placed over the control servers for the ship's main external airlock. It suggests a controlled, shaped explosion, one designed to punch through the hull and allow access to the airlock from the outside. You are looking at it because it is troubling you. An old ship, many cycles under its belt, carefully maintained, a reactor failure preceded by a carefully concealed external entry, a suite of hidden compartments tucked away. This was the Winterlight, and this was its story. But that's not the full story. Because there's something else, it is little more than a list, a tiny chunk of data you were able to pull from the ship's systems. The main systems were fried, of course, but the Winterlight had a separate system, one tucked away in one of its hidden compartments, armored and airwalled. This list, the only recoverable piece from the whole system, is a partial inventory. It details the contents of this hidden compartments. Some of it you recognize, some of it you don't. Ship mind ROMs, Shimmer, Cryo chain codes and then the final entry passenger sleeper you stare at the list on the terminal and try not to think about what it was like arriving here in the cold for so long half frozen in the freight container had this sleeper been smarter luckier how had they convinced the winter light a smuggler's ship if you ever saw one to extract them from snr luckier you laugh luckier you laugh there had been no remains found in any of the winter lights compartments. You had checked. They weren't so lucky, you guess. Not in the end. You hold up a vial of stabilizer to the light. This was all you find in their compartment. A parting gift from SNR. Well, it won't go to waste now. Put it back in your pocket. The thought still bothers you, though. Two ships carrying sleepers coming into the same yard. Two, one after the other. That feels wrong. You flick back and forth between data sets and terminal, thinking, and you see that thumbprint again, the mark of someone trying to get in, someone who entered the winter light with precision and speed, and when they were done, left the reactor to clean up the rest. The thought of that person makes you shiver. 
Suddenly, the office door creaks open. Drago stands in the doorway, staring at the equipment and notes you've assembled. What is all this? He snatches the sleeve from the desk faster than you realize he can move. You're running an investigation here? What am I paying you for? The drill on his shoulder starts whining shrilly, his anger passing through it through his implants. Where's the ship from? Leave this alone. He starts shaking his head. I know you have a lot of questions, but this isn't the way. He turns away, muttering to himself. This is the last thing I need. This ship had a sleeper on it. Jago's freezes, suddenly angry. What did you say? He pushes past you to look at the terminal at the list. He shakes his head. So what? Aren't all of you trying to escape? You are lucky it was you that made it out alive and not them. He folds his arms indignantly. Drago seems to steady himself and then turns back to you. The heat map of the reactor failure reflected in his headset's glassy eyes. I've given you a place to stay. I've given you work. I've... He stumbles over the words, unsure what to say. There's plenty of others who would have sold you on, turned you in, but not me, no. I know. He softens. Look, you've helped me too. He quiets the drone. I've done well by you, and you've returned a favor. He straightens up and clears his throat. But this obsession but this obsession you have with this ship isn't going to work for me. I can't have you making my clients nervous. I can't have you making my clients nervous. I can't you have I can't have you digging up whatever it is you are after. He sighs. You can't work here anymore. What about the winter light? Reaches over and switches the monitor off. Forget about the damn ship. You have enough to keep you up. Dragos reaches across you and flicks off the terminal. As the light of the monitor dies, a kind of eerie calm falls on you on both of you. Whatever this was, it is done. You made it out, sleeper. That means you have to move on. Someone kill. And you want to meet them? He shakes his head. We are done here. In the dark, Drago's headset glints, and you wish for a moment you could see his eyes and meet them. Maybe then he would understand. You get up from the desk, and Drago's gathers the notes, stuffing them into a pocket of his overalls. He holds the door for you, his headset as expressionless as always. You can stay in the container. I won't take that from you. Don't come back. His tone is final, definite, with an edge of disappointment. You walk out of the office and then out of the yard, not stopping to look back. You leave the yard, thumbing the vial in your pocket, knowing that this at least guarantees you a little bit more time. And as you walk, your mind once again drifts to that person who killed the winter light and whether or not that person will come for you. That's messed up, man. I got two upgrade points and it's not letting me buy this one. Oh, I need plus one here too. I see how it is. What to use them on? We'll hold on to them for now, chat.
It looks like we've done all we can for now, though. Or have we? I really want to get access to the ship mine fabrication stack. Go ahead and sell some components that we got off that ship. And now, we'll be able to spend that money on other things. Like possibly getting past the gate guard. Thanks to this money. Three more of this, and we could finally get access to the fabricator. Let's go to sleep. Man, three hours sure passed by quickly, didn't it? A few hours, 42 minutes, according to my clock. And once again, we have two perfect dice rolls. Bang, you better hurry the hell up. Come on, man. We don't have all day. You know, only a few cycles I'm gonna get found. That's gonna be bad. We're not gonna be needing any new vials for, it for a good while. This is going on right now. This is going on right now. This is going on right now. Gain access to the ore fabricator. I need to get access to that. For sure. We also could use some money use the money. But before we do any of that, let's go ahead and visit, see what's to be found in the low end gate. Starting with unit 207F. We find the entrance to the apartment, it's past the symbol of screw beneath layers of graffiti. Who lives here? As you push the door open, the automatic lights flicker on inside the apartment. They reveal yellowing plastic panels, the curved shape of wall-mounted utility units, the detritus of routine life arranged in every surface. You step inside, clicking the door shut behind. The amber light of the aging fixtures glaze everything with pale orange. The work surfaces hold a variety of objects indistinct in the dull lighting. A pale blue light drifts from a doorway at the end of the room. Mudges through the thin layer of dust suggests a recent, rare, and hurried visit. They trace a path to the water dispenser, the auto wash, then to the cabinet still half open. The shelf still sits on an empty. The sh on the shelf sits an empty pill case. You cross the cramped utility room with its auto wash dispenser's water closet towards the doorway. Through the doorway is a dark, warm room lit only by the faint glow of a terminal screen. As you approach the if you approach there, there's a crackle from the somewhere in the dark. Sleeper. Sabine's voice shakily echoes through the apartment. Welcome to my home. I'm sorry I can't be there. I have had to make alternate arrangements. I was able to record this message, but I don't dare to show my face. Something is happening within Yatagan. I no longer trust them. Their voice becomes distant, slipping behind the background noise. I have something to ask of you. I want you to get me out. Yatagan were supposed to hide me, to protect me, 
After everything happened, I was desperate. Then after that, I was too tired to care. A noise, like waves, passes over the recording. But I'm done with it now. I want out. Screw the depth. But I need insurance, something I can hold against them. I have my suspicions, but I can't be sure. I need information. And, as you know, you need me. This isn't a threat. You have to understand my position here. Never pause. I know sleepers. I have been here before. I can help you, but not with Yatagan's noose around my neck. Get me data. Get me information. Get me something that I can use against Yatagan. Then I can get out and you can get what you need. Please. Waves of static cut into Sabine's voice. Bring it here to my terminal. I'll get to it when I can. We look around the tiny room and try to imagine Sabine living here, working at the desk, sleeping in the bunk, blinking into the terminal at the dark. The recording cuts to static, filling the room with a white hiss, then silence. Track Yatagan data for Sabine. Oh, well, sure. Just three times? That's not that bad. The hunter is getting antsy, though. It looks like. I won't be able to hack all these Yatagan agents tonight, unfortunately. There's much more to explore. I'll definitely have to save some of this for later, though. Uh, you gain new energy from there. You'll need to keep doing things for people here in order to gain access to the other facilities, huh? Play Tafla. The clack of filter caps can be heard in every concourse on the low end, as the residents pay routine rounds of this game for cryo. Do I have to keep playing this? That's all intuition, too. Interestingly enough. over here. The free spoke. Tangled network of service passages and makeshift tunnels cut through the spoke as if it were a hive. There are no maps here. Or you can scale the spoke. Blistering, blistering with precarious elevators and stairways, the spoke can be navigated from the outside but the climb requires bravery. Hear that or perfect dice rolls. That'd be insane. I'm really starting to think that maybe intuition is for me. You better hurry up, Feng. I have a bad feeling about this empty container person. In the meanwhile, I guess I better make, uh, 
friends with the low enders here, huh? I wonder if I'll get money for this. I suppose what I should do first, actually, is hack some Yatagan agents. Or like, or hack a Yatagan agent, I should say. Looks like the hunter is starting to get angry. Be able to break through those anytime soon. There's no point in breaking this one either. Tempted to go through this one, but pretty sure the hunter is going to get angry. Should only ever do it if like I can guarantee that there's something good waiting for me in the end. Where's taking a while, isn't it? This is a pretty good way to make money right here. That's it. I'm gonna go put my points into intuition. Seems like it's the best part, best uh, selection for me. Or at least just one of them. Save one of the points. That's really nice, actually. Still need to do this too. Founder's Gap. To reach the Greenway, you need to pay for a pass, a practice invented by, spa by the Spacer's Mood here. They call it Founder's Ferry. That's our next section that we have to go to, huh? 150 credits for that shit. But in order to get those credits, you need to either need to fire them by doing jobs for people or other stuff, I guess.
Let's see if we can build a ship mind. I guess we're playing the exchange. Get ourselves get ourselves some money in the process too. Nineteen, not bad. Crossing my fingers, I hope that this does not fail. I fucked up. Would it fail a second time? It did not fail a second time. Good. That wasn't too bad. Still in a positive with cryo. But I did lose some energy in the process. You lose a little and then claw it back on it. I like how it actually changed. Good. Depend because based on what happened. Now we have access to this thing. We need three ship mine fragments. Once we figure that out. But where else are we gonna find ship mine fragments? That's my question. Potential to get some new energy if I succeed in this one. Hey Yuki, how are you doing tonight? We're actually going to be finishing up in a little bit, or at least for this cycle, but we are playing Citizen Sleeper tonight, which is a RPG. Believe it or not, a cyberpunk space op or space RPG, fairly good so far, and very dark, kind of dark, honestly. happen if I finish the yard hand skill tree tree over here. We're at a point in the game where I don't think there are really any wrong answers. I'm having a test in an hour and my ass doesn't remember most of the things, so good job me. Oh god, I'm so sorry. I hope you do okay in spite of how grim things are looking. I need credits to get to the greenway. So whether I like it or not. And on top of that, I need money. I need energy.
I wonder where I can get three more, two more ship mine fragments. You would think something like that would be over here in the yard. This is literally a shipyard. But I'm also low on cash. This is pretty much an easy 15 or 30 cryo. I don't think I really need money. Kinda wish you could hoard these things. might have been might be perfect after all don't want to try and play this game on half sleep just asking for trouble all right it looks like i'll just have to I'll, since the energy is kind of a problem i will need to do this I was asked to join a family for dinner in respond in return for fixing their AC. That's kind of cute. Leave this. Game has been saved. Let's take a nap. Don't need to inject any stabilizer for now. We should be good for the time being. I bet. Looks like we're only going to have four dice, though. Yep. These are fairly good dice, though. And it has been three hours, chat. I think we're going to call the game here for now. Seems like a nice time to do so. This has been a very interesting game. I'm glad to have gotten this game when I did and to stream it on stream. It is very different from what we usually play. There's a lot of talking. I was doing a lot of storytelling and I hope you all enjoyed this stream in spite of that. <laughs> At first I thought no one was going to show up, but quite a few of you did and I always appreciate that. I always appreciate I follow or appreciate you all coming by to keep me company. Sometimes I think that staying here, being stuck on uh, a website like Twitch, is not so bad with friends like y'all. Before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and purchase the soundtrack for this game. This is fucking amazing. Um, Actually, I kind of want to just go get the deluxe edition and I'll give a copy of Citizen, Citizen, Citizen Sleeper to someone. Uh, Oh, you will not receive an extra copy. Fucking... Mind. I guess the days of being able to do shit like that are gone, huh? So, um, I'll just go buy this stuff separately, I suppose. Purchase for myself. Wait, no. Move. Is it not gonna let me... Come on now. Okay, so I was able to add that. What about the Art of Citizen Sleeper? 
It'd be nice if I had, could get just get a physical version of this game. Of this stuff. Purchase for myself. Purchase. Thank you. Editions isn't technically a bundle in stream. Is that the reason? I guess that makes sense. Still kind of annoying though. I wonder if the dev developers would mind if I use some of this music from Citizen Sleeper as like part of my outro as like my new outro and intro music for streams. I guess the uh vibe of Citizen Sleeper is a lot more serious than I portray myself here. So it wouldn't fit exactly. Well at least not until I reveal a little bit more character lore, so to speak. Let's go find someone to raid. Who is awake tonight? It's only 12 midnight. I have once again forgotten to do my Duolingo classes, so Duolingo is probably pissed at me again. Poppy is play is hanging out tonight. Stanley Parable. Do y'all know what a parable is? Come on, man. There's actually a lot of people streaming tonight. Rising. On a Monday, no less. Arisu has not streamed in a very long time. I'm surprised they're here. You're playing a Splatoon Marathon, apparently. Uh, ROV tubers playing out right here. Here's a first world problem. Too many friends on Twitch. Too many people to possibly raid. <laughs> We would need to choose someone that was I'm starting to fall asleep. It's a good thing we decided to end a little bit early or and or not early but on time at three hours. Hmm. Let's welcome Arisu back, shall we? Very pretty cool person. Mai is not streaming right now, is she? For some reason, I keep missing her streams because she's in Japan now and her time zone is way different as a result. She is definitely not awake. Let's go ahead and raid. Arisu VT. Prepare for it, a big drop. So for today's raid message, we're going to go ahead and use... Whichever emotes is available that allows you to... That you will be allowed to use on other streams. I'm not losing track. I need to redo my emotes, to be honest. I got a few new ones I would like to display. Let's do Sleeper Raid for our raid call. Actually, no. Better idea. Since they're playing Splatoon, let's do... Something like...
something corny like splat raid, I guess. My brain, my brain is a little bit slow right now. Three hours of talking and play and playing a slow paced TTP RPG. But this should be fun. See y'all later. Have a good night. Hey, what's up, Lowell's? How you doing? We are playing Splatoon 3 right now. And we're not doing too hard. Maybe we can win. Nah, no, we're doing amazing.